Bill. Any luck? I didn't mean to startle you. That's rather clumsy of me. There's no harm done. She took our picture. Well, I consider that highly complimentary. <laughs> well, I couldn't resist it. The grouping was so perfect. Better give me that film, lady. Well, I can't very well do that without ruining the role. Well, of course, I'd be happy to send you a print. Well, you see, this is really a little embarrassing. At least to me, it is. My wife thinks I'm away at a business conference, and... Well, she couldn't understand that sometimes I have to get away to relax and think. Oh, well, she'll never see this. It's just a personal hobby of mine. One roll of film, more or less, won't matter, lady. If you don't mind, I think I'm the one to decide that. You're staying at Twin Peaks, aren't you? I believe I saw you at the lodge. You may have. In fact, you're in cabin number eight, Nancy Miller. I must confess, I asked the manager about you. I think I'd better be getting back. Oh, just a minute. You, uh, sure you know the way? Yes, perfectly. Thank you. Well, perhaps we can have a drink together later. Well, I'm afraid not this evening. Tomorrow, if you'd like to stop by. Yes, I would very much. reliably informed that you're highly intelligent. I'm beginning to wonder. Do you know a better way? Several. But if it does come to your way, I'm sure we could pick a better place than this. And now, instant Maxwell House coffee. The amazing coffee discovery in the jar with the stars on top. Presents Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Starring David Jansen. Now, any man with good sense who goes fishing is not a man with good sense. From the cracker down to the cracker dust, the only thing I looked was the branch of the tree in back of me. No. No, it just doesn't look tender enough. To make it worse, I would promised a certain young lady a fish fry. Jim? Harriet Talbot. Yes, I got it. Immediately, if possible. There's a plane at midnight. But they caught me at it. I don't think they know who I am yet. I'll call you. It's me, Diamond. Just a minute. How big is the one that got away? Six feet one, 180 pounds, me. Are you locking me in or someone else out? Have it, I guess. Yeah. And uh, drawing the blinds before it gets dark? Let's just say we do things differently in Kansas. No, well, I was uh, only trying to make conversation. I, uh, I improve after sundown in the first martini. If you don't mind, uh, I've got several things to do. Yeah, well, all right. I'll, uh, I'll see you in uh, 45 minutes after I change into my human being clothes. I'm sorry, but I'm very tired. Well, hey, we had a date tonight, remember? I thought we, uh, we'd have a commercial fish fry at that little roadhouse down the way. Frankly, I'd forgotten. Can I take a rain check? Honey. No rain. Look, I really don't feel like playing. Now, I have just got to figure that I have come to the end of a very imperfect day. 
No, wait a minute. Well, I was just being silly. We did have a date. Yeah, well, that's what I thought two minutes ago. And then one minute ago, I thought we didn't. What's in here? In there? Flies, I mean, hand-tied, custom-made, guaranteed flies. Only I didn't tell the fish about the canteen. You know, as of today, I, Richard Diamond, completely renounce the noble art of angling. Huh? Yeah, now the other one. <laughs> you seem to be pretty helpless. Would you uh, open the door? You don't strike me as a completely helpless type, Mr. Diamond. Oh, wait, I'll get my purse. Uh, why? Well, I'll walk with you to the lodge and wait for you there. <laughs> I thought you said you had something to do here. Yes, but I said I was being silly. I've seen that jeep around here before. Neither have I. Now, I wouldn't say I have a suspicious nature. Well, I merely don't trust anybody. And the girl was no exception. It's gay? No, of course not. Well, uh, something had. You seem to enjoy prying into my character, Mr. Diamond. Well, now, you've got to admit it's fascinating. When I met you three days ago, you mentioned that you lived in Montana. Now today, you live in Kansas City. That takes character. I was just using Kansas as a figure of speech. There are a few things more obvious than damsels in distress. I thought maybe I could help. I'm not in distress. That is another thing about damsels in distress. They never admit it. I'd much rather be plied with champagne and philosophy, Mr. Diamond. Well, Miss Miller, how nice seeing you again. I don't believe we've met. My name is Adams. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Diamond, how are you? How do you do? Uh, won't you join? I'm sure Thank Mr. You. Adams would rather rejoin his friend. No, as a matter of fact, I'm quite alone. I would like a moment of your time, if I may, please, Miss Miller. Oh, well, this is personal. I'll take this to the bar. Oh, no, I'm sure it's nothing personal. Well, not exactly, that is. You see, I was in the woods this afternoon and happened to run across another hunter. Miss Miller saw fit to record the event for posterity. Well, I explained to Mr. Adams that candid photography is my hobby. Yes, and as I understand, quite an expensive hobby. Miss Miller, I'll give you $50 for that roll of film. It's a hobby I should look into. I told you, I'll send you a print. Perhaps I'm not making myself sufficiently clear. Hobby people have a pension for entering contests, Mr. Diamond. A friend of mine a few years ago on a hunting trip took several pictures, and they all ended up in a color layout and outdoor living. I'm not that good. Well, let's say, then, that my peace of mind is worth $100 to me. Oh, you know, these prizes get out. You're going to be the most photographed man at Twin Peaks. I think we can dispense with your little pleasantries, Diamond. I do not enjoy being bought, Mr. Adams, or bullied. Perhaps you can make her see reason. Hold out for 200. I'm sorry you're taking this thing as some sort of a jest. I only think you're being very unreasonable. Yes, perhaps I am. Well, I would appreciate your restricting that photograph to your private collection, Miss Miller. Now, would you two excuse me, please? Yeah, see you around. Well, so that's what it's all about, huh? All right, I admit something's bothering me, but it's certainly not that silly picture. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go home. Oh, no, we still have some champagne left. Please? After Adam's prices, I don't suppose a penny for your thoughts would interest you. I was just thinking that we should have brought along the bottle of champagne to finish it. But I'll settle for a scotch if you've got one. A lady, you're practically asking for an invitation to stop by and see my etchings. Just for the drink. Yeah. I wonder who writes those travel folders. Excellent hunting and fishing, soft, romantic nights. <laughs> You're a nice guy, Mr. Diamond.
Well, it's not much, but uh, well, let's face it, it isn't much. I'll get the drinks. On the rocks or with water? Some water, please. There you go. There's no law that says we can't pretend it's champagne. Well, I could um, giggle, say it tickles my nose. <laughs> Unless you want to disillusion me completely. I'm afraid I'm going to have to do just that. Yeah, well, go ahead. You've lost me already this evening. Well, there's a certain man in my life, and we had a fight. I came here to get away. Hmm. But I've got to go back and straighten things out. End of story. Well, that's a nice, safe story. You sure you didn't leave out the twist? A little one. I was going to go back earlier and take the large limousine into the city, and, well, then you walked in, and I thought maybe being with you... But I uh, ran second in a two-horse race. Rick, would you take me back to town? I'd rather appeal for a new trial. No, it's something I have to do. Lady, you have used up a year's supply of woman's prerogative in one evening. All right, come on. Mm -hmm. Blind is drunk? Let's not go into that again. All right, but uh, it wasn't drawn when we left. Now, one of the reasons to draw a blind is to turn on a light. And one of the reasons to turn on a light would be to find something. Now, I'd say your room was carefully ransacked, Miss Miller. Get me out of here, Rick. Over you, sir. Did they get the film? No. Well, I knew I was in it now. My curiosity had pushed me past the point of no return. Curiosity in the color of her eyes and the way her nose turned up at the end. Well, I didn't regret getting involved. I, well, I did regret leaving my automatic 200 miles away in a drawer. Let's quit playing house, huh? I know things must look a bit peculiar. Peculiar? Well, let's see if it's strong enough. First of all, it's obvious that you went out with me to soften me up. You figured you could risk a few extra hours for the added protection of a personal bodyguard that'll stay with you to the plane or train or whatever. But what are you afraid of now? Who's behind us? I don't know. Adams, maybe. The man he met this afternoon, or both. Well, don't tell me that film isn't important now. How far will they go to get it? They're not going to get it. Now, let me put it to you this way. The name in the flap of your purse is Harriet Talbot. You tell me you changed your mind about your name. Look, you've just got to trust me. I don't see why. It's obvious that you have the film and our little friends back there want it. I think I'll stop and give it to them. You can't. Look, they're not going to settle just for the film now. They'd have to, they'd have to take care of us. Lady, you'd better convince me of that or I'm slowing down. What if I told you I'm a reporter? Even with the few facts I have, I'd say that spelled trouble, if I believed you. Do you? Well, 90% no. It's the 10% that traps me. Guess I have to go along for the ride, don't I? Rick, look. Yeah, I don't have to. Look, I hate to give you a chance to think up a lot of plausible details, but the code was here first. I better concentrate on it. Why did I have to listen to you? Now, how could I know she'd become involved with that diamond character? This whole meet was a mistake. 
Even without the dame, I don't like your proposition. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to like it. Remember, you spilled your whole organizational setup to me. If you're threatening me with a frame. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I'm sure we can work out a compromise somehow. Slow down, will you? I can't get a beat on him. Get down. Did it hit? I don't know yet. I take it back, it hit. What are we going to do? This big masquerade of yours didn't include carrying a gun, did it? I didn't plan on quite this sort of activity. I'll have to settle for your makeup kit. We lost them around that curve. Your paper buys me a new car if this works. Get over there. Let's not wait around and see if they took the hook. This makes it perfect for us. Anybody could have an accident here. Yes. And even if the doors were sprung and they were thrown free, they still wouldn't stand a ghost of a chance. Not a ghost of a chance. Can't we go back to the road? No. I know this cross-country routine is strictly for the Boy Scouts, but it's shorter and it's safer. Besides, I don't think we can get a ride in the road. Unless it's in a jeep. Can I come in for a moment? Why, certainly, officer. Harry Carlin? Yes. That narrows it a little? Narrows what? Carbon over the cliff at Devil's Bend. We figured it had to come from here at Lakeview or from Twin Peaks. Had all the guests accounted for it except an Adams, a Diamond, and a Miss Miller. All from Twin Peaks. Don't suppose you know anything about them? Can't help you. Too bad. All of them dead, I guess. No. Just one. Well, that's a break. But how could two people live through anything like that? There was only one in the car. A man. Must have been thrown free. Brush fire took care of his body, though. I see. Just one. Yeah, it looks like Adams or Diamond. We'll find out. I think that'll be all, sir. Well, good night, officer. Good night. shirt from Diamond just to wear, Mutt. Go find him. Just go to sleep here for a little while. No. You're just trying to punish me because I won't tell you something that's none of your business. Yeah, now look, anytime I'm subject to being killed, I think I have a reason to know why. I'm sorry. You'll understand in a few days. Yeah, well, I can't wait that long.
are you going to do? I'm trying to reach the fire station. Maybe they can reach the police. I want the police at Twin Peaks when we get back. No, Rick, please. That could ruin everything. I hope so. Obviously, you haven't recognized Adams yet. Obviously. George Allerton, political boss of the Alliance Machine in the Midwest. And his playmate? I don't know his name, but somebody would have recognized him from the photo. He's a boss, a political representative of a big crime syndicate. So one and one equals collusion, huh? It's been in the works a long time, and I've got a whole series of articles all set to prove it. But I needed this as proof. So I took a chance on a tip that Allerton had set up a secret meeting, and that's it. All this to fill a newspaper? Articles like this one have won the Pulitzer Prize. But if the local police... All play... right. If you win another round on points, the phone is dead. Come on, let's hike. Oh, you're completely heartless. What a nice guy. had a hunting dog. Well, that lets the bull down. <laughs> we would be sitting ducks. Well, what's better than standing ducks? Isn't it? <laughs> well, we can't outrun them, but we can make them work for it. I'll apologize later. <laughs> Get under the pier. It wasn't worth it. I mean, no story was worth that. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. Oh. The film ended up a little soggy, but still good enough to print in Nancy's, uh, I mean, Harriet's trade expose. And me? Well, <laughs> we were gonna have that fish fry after all.
Tune in again next week when Instant Maxwell House Coffee brings you another adventure of rich...